What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Acre Scuba Marina. Today's video topic is going to be on how well a regulator should breathe. Now I'll give you a quick backstory. Earlier this morning I received a phone call from one of our customers who stated, hey I'm down here on vacation, I hooked my regulator to the tank, I made a dive down to about 80 feet, and the regulator, it seemed like it was struggling. I, I just wasn't... I didn't feel like the regulator was working the way that it should. Now, a little bit more backstory is this particular regulator I rebuilt for this customer about three or four months ago, and so we set it up to factory specs, we set his cracking pressure and all that to where he wanted it to breathe, and then he went off and made several dives. Now, in between that time, he had actually switched over to a side mount system versus a back mount, and he started using a more higher performing regulator and then of course he switched back to this one for his dive vacation. Now the reason I tell you that is is because there's three major reasons that a regulator may or may not breathe the way you think that it should. One of course is intermediate pressure which we'll talk about how that works. Number two is of course cracking pressure. We're going to talk a little bit about cracking pressure. And then the other thing is, and if you look here below me, you'll notice that I've got a slew of different regulators here. And each regulator is going to breathe different from the other based off whether it's a piston or diaphragm reg, whether it's a balanced or unbalanced or a low performing or a higher performing. Some regs are designed for shallow reefs, some regs are designed for cold water, and of course some regs are designed for extreme deep diving. So depending on what type of regulator you have, based off how the intermediate pressure is set up and how the cracking pressure is set up, and also based off what you are used to breathing, that is really what determines how well a regulator breathes. So let's look at each of those components and talk a little bit about them. So inside a scuba cylinder, of course, we have high pressure air. And what we're not going to get into is a high pressure tank, low pressure tank. It's high pressure air. You know, if it's a steel 72 at 2250, that is a lot of pressure. We'll call that high pressure. If it's a standard aluminum 80 at 3000 PSI, that's a high pressure tank. Maybe if it's a high pressure 100 at 3442, that's still a high pressure cylinder. So as far as anything as the cylinder is concerned, we're going to call that high pressure. Now unfortunately putting your mouth on the valve, turning it on, you're not going to be able to breathe that high pressure when that valve is turned completely on. So of course we want to change that pressure to a more intermediate pressure, what we call IP pressure of course, or intermediate pressure that's more workable and breathable. And that's exactly what a first stage does. And if you'll take a quick look here, this is just a Marius 15X. Basically what the first stage does, it takes high pressure air through the orifice, converts it or slows it down to intermediate pressure or lower pressure before distributing it, of course, through the individual hoses. And that's all this is doing. And we're taking high pressure air, we're converting it to low pressure air, and then we're going to distribute it through the individual hoses of that reg system here. Now once that air comes down to the second stage, which is the part that we breathe off of, the way this works is more of a demand system, and this is what we call cracking pressure. So as air comes in, it's going to stop right here at the demand lever, or the back side of the demand lever. There's a little poppet in the seat that kind of holds that air there. And since it's a demand system, we demand it to give us air by simply inhaling. And that inhalation process, that is the actual cracking pressure that we're going to talk about. As I inhale, basically air is going to suck in, or what air I'm trying to take in, is going to suck in on the diaphragm here where the purge is, and it's going to press on that little demand lever that's inside the second stage. And the harder that it is, or the, the lesser that it is to breathe in, that's what we actually call the cracking pressure. So when we adjust the cracking pressure, we're actually adjusting how hard it is to open up that demand lever, or close that demand lever, if you will. We're not really changing how much air we're getting, we're just simply changing how easy it is to start that process to push in on that demand lever to give us air. And of course, that is cracking pressure. We can change the cracking pressure very easily, just like we can the intermediate pressure by simply setting up the regulator for you. Now, most manufacturers are gonna have preset IP pressures that they recommend from the factory it should be set at. Depending on your regulator model, that can be anywhere, say, from 128, that's kind of on the low, low scale there, that would be for a, a cold water reg system, all the way up to, say, a 150, 155. That would be the, the highest, about the highest intermediate pressure that you would want. And there's a lot of fluctuation in between there, but it's, let's, let's average that and let's say a 138 to a 150 would be the, the ideal area where we would want it. Of course, the lower end for being for cold water regs, the higher end being for your warm tropical regs, stuff like that. So once we had changed 
intermediate pressure, which your local dive shop can do. If you don't have a local dive shop or you're technically inclined, of course, with the proper tools, training, and equipment, you can change your regulator system yourself. But if you don't, definitely let your local dive shop do it. But after we change the intermediate pressure, we're going to come down to the second stage, and this is where we change the cracking pressure. And most regulators are pretty much set up the same. Uh, basically, there's a little screw in here. We call it righty-tighty, lefty-loosey. Righty-tighty means if I turn that screw to the right, it's going to make it a little bit more difficult to inhale. If I turn it to the left, it's going to make it a little bit easier. If you turn it too far, of course, it will free float. Now, let's talk about setting the intermediate pressure and the cracking pressure to match each other. There's a lot of times that we may take an alternate system and try to match it with our primary that's two different systems. Maybe I'll put the Prestige and the Rover together, or maybe I'll put the Prestige and say an MV Octo together or something like that, and they don't really match on cracking pressure. So once you have the intermediate set, you have to go and change both of the second stage to the proper cracking pressure for that. If their intermediate pressure is too high, it doesn't really matter what you've got the cracking pressure set, it's still gonna free flow because you're gonna have too much PSI pushing through into that valve. So setting your intermediate and setting your cracking pressure is key to making a regulator breathe at, a, at its optimum performance. Now the last thing that we wanna talk about, of course, is getting used to a regulator system. If you're used to breathing that very high-end balanced diaphragm system, and then you switch over to a very low-end uh, piston-style rig, you're definitely going to be able to tell a difference in how it breathes, no matter how well you've got that thing set up and, and got the IP check and get your cracking pressure where you want it. There is a difference between how one breathes based off simply is it a high-performing rig or a low-performing rig. Now, with that, that is going to be individual to you. Now, we can set these things up on machines and let them read it, but usually if you dive enough, you can tell the difference between a very high-performing reg and a low-performing reg. And if you set your low-performing reg to breathe just right for you and you really like it, and then you switch over to a high-performing reg and then come back to this, it's going to seem as if that regulator is not set up properly. And it really is, and it's a good breathing rig, but unfortunately, you've got used to how that high-performing rig breathes. So guys, I really hope this video helps you out in understanding how regulators work and how we set them up to breathe properly for what they do. If you've got any questions, simply put it down in the comment section below. If you like this video, you want to see more technically based videos like this, hit that like button for me, put a comment down below, talk about what rig you got, or just ask me a question. I'll be happy to answer it. Guys, as always, make sure you check back each week for a new video. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.